here we go then this is it we have finally reached episode number five and to kick off episode five we're going to go through all of the transfers that happened in season number five kicking things off with the players that have left the club the first of which was Armin Gigovic he's a player that we signed quite early on in the save he's actually wanted to get away for a little while now couldn't find the right club until Al Fate came in they offered us around 20 million pounds which was a massive profit on what we paid we took the money and allowed him to go to the Middle East the only other player to leave was Samuel Nimbombe. He's a player that never made it to the first team, was always in our second team. But when you get £4.5 million for players who've never played for the first team, you probably are going to take the money if you can't fit them into your first 11. And that's exactly what happened there. He was allowed to go to Bruges. So with those two players going and us in the final season, we had money to spend. The first player that we brought in was Filip Stankovic. Now he is coming to be our number one goalkeeper. But there's nothing wrong with Schlager in terms of his ability. So to replace him was a little bit harsh. The only problem is Schlager has a real poor injury record and he's never on the pitch. And with the injuries coming in the way they are on FM24, he basically was injured every other week. So we needed a more reliable goalkeeper. And Stankovic was the man coming in from Inter Milan. The next player to come in was Ernest Poku. He is a player who possesses 16 pace, 17 acceleration, 14 for dribbling and 13 for technique. He also has a flair of 13 and off the ball of 14. He's a player who will frighten defenders when he runs at them. can also play at the top of the pitch as a striker. As a rotation piece, this was a no-brainer. We just went out and bought him. can play him in cup games, can play him in league games when he needs to play and he will do a sound job. And the final player to come in for the save is Armel Bella Kotchap, former Southampton defender who on the game was at PSV, Liverpool, Juventus. And he's one that came to us for, I think, around £12 million. It wasn't too much money. Didn't have to go and break the bank for him. And I really think that he could be, if we were going forwards, a defender at the age of 26 that would still be with us in five years time and I think he would still have a little bit more of development to come from him uh, six foot three good with his jumping reach and heading obviously and a sound defender who has played in big leagues so those are all the players that have departed and the players that have arrived did they have the impact what happened in the final season To start off the competition roundup, we started our season in the Trophée des Champions. We have won the last two of these. Unfortunately for us, we couldn't make it three in a row as we came up against PSG, had a dull nil-nil draw in 90 minutes and ended up losing on penalties. In the Cup de France, as always, we would enter in the ninth round. This time we were paired off against Strasbourg. We would win 3-1 to go into the tenth round. In the tenth round of the Cup, we would play against Saint-Étienne. We would beat them 5-2. That would put us into the eleventh round, where we would face off against Lyon. We would beat them 2-1. In the quarterfinals, we would come up against Wren, and unfortunately, Wren would go on and end our run in the competition, and we would lose 3 1 in the quarterfinals. On to the Champions League, and I can honestly say the Champions League is the one that got away. This will be the one regret from this save that I will have because I couldn't string it together to get us to where we needed to be. Once again, you can see we are not in the top places, and that's because we finished in 27th and did not get out of the league phase. This time we played in eight games. We would win two of them against Maccabi Tel Aviv and Legia Warsaw. We would draw two against Marseille and Bayern Munich. But we would lose four against Barcelona, Red Bull Leipzig, Tottenham and Feyenoord. That would leave us on minus four as a goal difference and eight points. FC Copenhagen and the teams above them finished on 10. So it's a case of so close yet so far. So once again, we would go out in the league phase. So that just leaves us with Liga 1 to look at. And as you can see, we would also fall short in Liga 1, finishing eight points behind Paris Saint-Germain, who would go on to reclaim their trophy after we held it for the past two seasons. If we break down our season, we played 34 games. We won 23. We had eight draws, three losses, 
had a goal difference of 42 and finished on 77 points. So even though we finished eight points behind PSG, we finished eight points ahead of Marseille, who had finished on 69 points behind us. In terms of the player stats for the goals this season, wouldn't have anybody in the top goals. Kylian Mbappe would go on to win that. In terms of the average ratings, PSG would lock out the top three there. In the assists, we had Golovin with 14 and Bargy with 13 this season. And then we had yellow card cards Moscardo and Schmidt getting 11 and 10 so disappointing really to see that we couldn't go on and win a third Liga 1 Uber Eats and the season kind of gone out with a bit of a whimper we can still hold our heads high for what we've achieved but I really would have loved it if we could have just gone that extra little mile in season five A quick look at the finances then. I know we're not going into a new season, but if we were to have carried over, the board would have had £20 million as an overall balance. The budget at the club would have been £23.9 million, which again is still crazy considering that's more money than they have. Uh, the wage budget is £1.9 million and they are spending £1.6 million. So a decent amount there for them to go and sign new players. In terms of the club vision and how we would finish, we would finish with our job security being secure, a B- minus on the final season. For the objectives, work within the wage budget, on course, sign players to sell for a profit, satisfied, spend the original transfer budget, delighted, increase commercial revenue is crept in now, because obviously the money that they're getting was coming from transfers, not from winning trophies or from TV deals, those kinds of things. Uh, looking at four year contracts for the first team, by the end of next season, they would want to be competitive in the Champions League, qualify for the Champions League. For the board feedback, we get a B minus. Play attacking football, make the most of set pieces, and play entertaining football, they're delighted or very pleased. Play high tempo pressing football, they are pleased. In terms of notable highlights, 5-3 victory against Marseille, 5-1 humbling of Brest, and they are happy with the quality of pressing using a Geigen press style. Disappointed about the 3-2 loss against Angers. In terms of the supporters, so they are disappointed this season about developing players through the youth team. Uh, play attacking football, delighted. Make the most of set pieces, delighted. Play entertaining football, very pleased. Play our tempo pressing, pleased. Finish above Nice and finish above Marseille, pleased and satisfied. In terms of the highlights there, they're pretty much the same. 5-3 victory against Marseille, Rooney Bargy's recent performances and the 5-1 de defeat of Brest. Then... For the notable criticisms, 2-3 loss against Angers and Filip Stankovic's recent performances. So overall, we have had some decent feedback. The final season, both board and supporters giving us a B-. minus. What have you got to do to get an A? Because we have won trophies. Okay, we fell short in the final season, but I'm pretty sure we've done better than a B-. minus. So to round out the series, we're going to have one last look at the first team and starting 11. And I'll also show you the opinion of the assistant manager. If we were going forward, what we would play. So to kick things off, I would go with Stankovic in goal, Salisu, Schmidt, who has developed brilliantly as a footballer, Roel and Singo at the back, Moscardo, Golovin and Johansson are pretty much a dream three in the middle. Then you've got Rago, who's taken over from Gilherme on the left, Bargi on the right and Kusi Asare up top. If we have a little look at Mr Kusi Asare, we can see he's now valued at 77 to £111 million. When you consider we paid £11.5 million for him, that is some improvement. Looking across the three seasons he spent at the club then, he managed to score 68 league goals in the three seasons. He has a stroke rate of 82 in 134 across all of the teams that he has played for. On the season, he actually played 45 games and scored 30 goals in total. Looking at some of the other players then, Rago, and see how he's developed. He didn't really get too much first team football in across the seasons that he's been with us he's been with us 23 to 28 played 109 times still only 22 years old there's definitely still some development there in terms of Rooney Bargy another one who is 22 years old he's played 125 times and scored 62 goals for the club and if we show you that here the final season wasn't his best he had a few injuries here and there which will 
kind of limited him to 32 appearances, 9 goals, 13 assists. But when he was on the pitch, he was influential and is definitely a vital part of this team. In terms of Joe Hannison and his development, he's an outstanding footballer who at the age of 25 probably won't develop too much more but there is probably a little bit more that could come out in his development then you got Moscardo he is just again the only way I can describe them is fantastic footballers age of 22 there is definitely still more improvement to come and he has played as a midfield general for us then as I said Schmidt came in quite early on in the save I bought him mainly to play as a left back he has actually carved his way into the first team as a centre back so fair play to him he has got himself a slot in my best 11 if we go into the squad planner and have a little look at the best 11 report then so he would go with Stankovic, Salisu, Vallejo, Schmidt, Singo, Moscardo, Johansson, Golovin, Rago, Bargi and Kusi Asare so not bad to finish us off and I think that is pretty good in terms of what the team has become in the assistant report then so it's top goal scorer is a strength wage budget youth prospects aerial reach best player form defensive depth and the weaknesses are long shots penalties communication amongst goalkeepers teamwork work rate free kick taking leadership overall depth is still there but we are signing players as we go through it so once again just to recap the competitions we would be runners up in the Trophée de Champion poor performances in the Coupe de France and in the Champions League and a second place in the league if we go to the club info page let's have a little look at the overview to see the trophies that are there so 10 Liga 1 titles now we won 26 and 27 in the Coupe de France we won 2027 uh, Cup de la Ligue don't think we play in that anymore only 2001 so that's their Trophy de Champion was the other one I was looking for 25 and 26 so we have had success since we have been at the club. We have improved the team. We have invested the money wisely, built them a playing squad that can go on to bigger and better things. All whilst winning leagues, winning cups. Couldn't crack the Champions League, though. That definitely will be the one that got away. But it's been a fantastic time in Monaco. Five years building that team, playing some absolutely fantastic football, switching to the 4-3-3, really advanced this team. So if you want to play as Monaco, I will have a video on the 4-3-3 tactic. You can plug it in and have a go for yourself. But I think it's pretty much time to say goodbye to Monaco. It's been a blast and I hope you've enjoyed the series. Right then, if you're still with me at this point of the video, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button to help the channel out, I really do appreciate it. I cannot thank you all enough for supporting the channel across the past couple of months. It really has been great to watch. Before you go, don't forget to check out. There's other things on the channel. Hints, tips, tutorials, wonder kids, let's plays. A little bit of something for everybody on the channel. But for this one, I'm going to leave it there. Big thank you for watching the Monaco series. I'll see you on another video very soon.